But another part of my evil scientist scheme is to move this technology into something that is portable. Because MRI machine, as I'm sure Mary Lou mentioned, is an incredibly inefficient, uh, not uneconomical technology, right? Berkeley has a giant grant from the NIH to build the next generation of MRI machine, and that is gonna end up being a $30 million project. So uh, it would be difficult to imagine building one of those, you know, in every house, that's never gonna happen. So we wanna come up with portable methods of measuring brain activity. All the portable me methods that have come up in the past are uh, frankly pretty sad. They don't recover much information at all. Uh, Mary Lou, I'm sure, talked about her awesome work using, uh, uh, trying to develop new methods for doing functional near infra infrared spectroscopy. Uh, I have my own uh, strange scheme uh, to try to do, use microwave imaging for this. So this is a microwave brain imaging device. It's essentially used as radar technology, but instead of sending the radar up into the sky and getting reflection back from the plane, it sends radar into your head and tries to uh, image the brain. And, and this is a, sort of a state-of-the-art uh, microwave imaging. On the right is the brain reconstruction. Um, it's kind of sad. Uh, we have a, a method to do this that we think works better. So on the left here is our uh, anatomical reconstruction of a dead sheep's brain from this microwave technology. And on the right is our anatomical reconstruction from MRI. And you can see that this method seems to be working pretty well. So in the future, uh, I think these advances in non-invasive brain imaging will lead to three really important things. Improved medical devices for diagnosis, uh, things that can be done for diagnosing uh, and monitoring mental health. And of course, eventually, all of this will be moved into civilian society, where we'll have essentially ubiquitous brain uh, computer interfaces that will be continuously reading brain activity out from us. And that introduces a whole bunch of interesting ethical uh, issues that I won't talk about in the interest of time. But I'm happy to discuss them at our leisure. Thank you. Now, what's, what's happening, it's from this, my point of view, like it's, is that uh, a lot of this research is financed by, by the military. Uh, the, the, the trick here is basically that, let's say there is some progress, uh, they cover with uh, military secrets. So the, the result of that uh, project is partially public. Let's say some results will go public, but many results will not be published and will not be available for public domain. In this, in this um, way, we hyperbolize a, a growth that is quite uh, giving some space from the public domain uh, uh, knowledge acquisition. You, you see what I mean? So let's say I have a cool project. I got funding by, by the military. It's the best result of my, of my project is kept secret. I don't know for how a long time. And uh, the rest, the, the little things are made public. As like basically uh, all the world works like this, then the interaction that I can have with you, if you have an, another kind of project like that, is on the uninteresting stuff level. While at this, on the military things, they have like real good toys to play with and they can interact with each other with real good toys. That gives them like the chance to go a lot more far ahead than what we can do on the public domain. Anyway, this is the concept of, um, I bring here the concept of uh, um, technological supremacy. At some point, the, the head of the pyramid will detach from the base. Anyway, let's go on.